What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta. In the last episode, we got uh, the Beast Within, which is our panther form. It lets us run super, super quick. Uh, off screen, I also bought the Crow Within and the Bat Within. The Crow Within lets me fly a short distance, which is really handy for reaching a couple Alfheim gates later on. And the Bat Within adds uh, a little bit of... I guess it's an insurance policy on my dodges. What it does is... If you react a hair too late and take a little bit of damage after you, uh, dodge out of the way... Or rather, if you get hit, hear a hair too late dodging out of the way. If you react quick enough after the hit, it will negate the damage from the hit, and it will also activate which time you'll kind of disperse into a flurry of bats. And this is a little insidious chest back here, right at the start of the level with our First LP. This is the one for, I think, Odette, which are uh, some pretty cool little ice gates. <laughs> Seem to be getting a little video glitch here. Uh oh. Hopefully, Luca's tumor is not going to return. Rain all over our parade. Let's see, I think somewhere around here there's either a collect. Oh, there it is. There's a notebook. This one is entering Vigrid. Okay, so. If I remember correctly, this is the one that talks about, like, the culture and the development of Vigrid as sort of this isolationist, almost Vatican-like city where they're buffered by a mountain on one side and the sea on the other. And, yeah, this is the, the one. Antonio notes that the train from the first chapter is the only link to the rest of the world that uh, Vigrid has. And to ride the train, you need to submit an application and pass a background check just to, just to get a riding visa. Extremely isolationist. And he closes out with some more foreshadowing by mentioning there's a link between Vigrid's uh, strictures and the corporation titled the Ithabal Group, I think it's pronounced. Could be totally wrong about that. God knows I have been in the past. And there's an interesting little development story that goes along with that corporation. Ithabal is an Old Norse meeting location for the gods. In-game, the Ithabal group was originally going to be called Acer, which is named after the Pantheon that consisted of uh, Thor, Odin, Baldur, and others. When they went to record uh, lines about the if, about uh, the Acer group, it was called back then, uh, they were recording in a studio in Los Angeles, and they were told when they came in that the studio just had another group recently recording lines for a game in which the enemy corporation was also named Acer. So they had to quickly come up with something else that night before they could record. And this was the result of that. Now, Bayonetta was released in... Uh, I want to say it was... 2010, right? Yeah, it was January 2010. What does it sound wrong? It came out the same month as Darksiders. It was either January 2010 or 2009, but I'm pretty sure it was 2010. Anyway! So, what other games have Acer Corporations? I think Max Payne? But that doesn't really fit the timeline if... Max Payne was recording something in 2009 or 2010? Like, right before Bayonetta came. Uh... Well, it was Bayonetta's development, so maybe a couple years back, 2007, I would say, at the latest. Or, what, else, what other games had an Acer group? Did, uh, Two Human have one? Let's see, that game would have been in production, when, between 2008 and 2010, maybe? No, wait. I don't know, I'm all mixed up. So, anyway, you saw back there that there was breakaway rocks that hide another LP fragment, so we're getting those pretty rapidly. And before we can do the witch statue puzzle here, we have to fight these two harmonies. Not a big fan of these guys. They're just such a pain in the ass to drop at this point in the game. Kinda have to get- oh! There's my opening! Come on, hopefully I can get a little bit of damage in before he just takes off. Ah, that was okay. The only thing annoying about, um, the Beast Within is that it's activated by double-tapping the RT trigger, so if you get trigger-happy with, uh, mashing it to dodge, then you'll just kind of accidentally 
activate uh, the beast within. Okay, so... Still have one of these guys around. I'm not sure where. Oh, he's underground. Wonderful. Yeah, and you saw right there me disperse into the flock of bats, and that's uh, that's the bat within. It means that I took a, I took damage, but within a couple frames of taking the hit, I activated uh, the bat within. I dodged. So it just makes uh, the game a little bit more forgiving and more lenient. Not that it really needed to be, it's just nice to have it there. Now we just beat up snakes all day long. <laughs> the sickest of all power bombs. Now, when, Mal when Malthus flies away, you can see not only the vortex of hair that trails behind him, but also the big red circular portal, and it kind of looks like those weights that people tie at the end of balloon strings. And it makes me really kind of want a Malthus balloon. Oh, that would be the sickest thing to have at a children's birthday party, this big demonic googly-eyed crow in balloon form. Oh, it's wonderful. I think I'm going to give that to my niece for her next birthday. Too eventful here, just a couple uh, egg angels. I've even taken to call them egg angels. I forget what they're called now. I remember the applauds and the. Nope, never mind, I don't. Or I just remember the applauds, not the other guys. Sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get the standard enemies, to... their names to stick. Now we just run across here. I'll just. I'll take the damage, whatever. And there's some more breakaway rocks that will reveal a lever. But we are not interested in that lever just yet. We just came up here to trigger an Alfine portal to appear a little ways back. So before we go forward... Oh yeah, these guys here. We'll kill them and then we will do some light backtracking to an Alfine portal. Off with his head. Yeah, I remember the big guys, I think, are the applauds, and I can't remember what the smaller guys are. Or vice versa, I don't, I don't know. The more distinct ones are a bit easier to remember, like the, uh, the Ardors and the Grace and Glories. But, unless the game is going to pull a surprise quiz that I've never seen, it's not that big of an issue. It'd be great if it just had, like, a Banjo-Kazooie-style quiz at the end of the game, right before you fight the final boss. Just be so gloriously stupid. Oh, come on, get up there. There we go. Now, which one is this one? All right, torture attacks. So, we'll see if the same tactic of spamming breakdance to build magic applies here. It went pretty well the first time. It seems to be going well this time. I don't know what the waves consist of for this one. They give me plenty of time, it looks like, though. Oh god, okay, that's where you can see um, the Bat Within really, really come, into hand come in handy. Because not only 
do you not lose the magic from getting hit because it negates the damage? Uh, you don't lose the health, obviously. It also builds... Yeah, you can see again there, it builds twice as much magic as a regular Witch Time dodge. Because it's inherently more risky, because to activate it, you have to have already been hit. So you can kind of see it as... You can spin it as being a higher risk, higher reward version of uh, the regular Witch Time dodge. But really, it's mostly a safety net that tends to come in handy here. Let's see, so two out of... Two out of five already done. And luckily, all the enemies have plenty of health, so it's really easy to build up magic. By just wailing on them. Not worrying about them dying before uh, you can complete a torture attack to kill them. Oh boy, Stingrays. My favorite enemy. These are limited numbers in this kind of enclosed fighting arena. They're not too much of a hassle. Oh, god damn it, I took a hit. Normally, it just wounds my pride to take a hit. Here, though, it's actually a real big pain in the ass because of how much magic you lose. But, they gave me either four and a half or five minutes to complete this challenge, so I'm assuming that there are a lot more enemies in this one. Which means a lot more opportunities to build up magic, which means that even losing that little bit of magic, I should still be fine. I would have preferred to be able to finish that guy off with a torture attack. Now that I have a grace and glory to fight, that means I have to actually work a little bit harder. Because you can't just torture attack them at full health to finish them. So if I had finished that last enemy, I would have been four out of five, could have brought one to half health, built up enough magic, and then by the time I was done building that magic, I would have had a torture attack to kill five out of five, and then that leaves me open to just focus on playing normally with the other one. Oh, luckily the, uh, the fire, uh, the fire grace and glory enemy I don't know if he is Grace or Glory. Does this handy little spinning thing. Which means he is super, super easy to get a Witch Time activation on. Also, I heard uh, it's you get a better bonus if you use Torture Attacks to finish low health enemies. But maybe that's just because you build up a better combo score getting them to low health and then Torture Attacking them instead of just killing them outright and then ending the fight with fewer attacks squeezed in? Also, I wasn't expecting this fourth wave. This could actually be a little bit dangerous. Actually, no, I have two health left. I'm pretty good. Rule of thumb only applies to this stupid fire dog, so... even if he hits me, I'll be good. And I'll finish that right before that can happen. Do not joke around with the fire dogs. Now it's just you. I wonder if I get bonus points for having uh, exceeded the, requis the requisite amount of torture attacks. You can see this tail attack is... It looks like it comes pretty quickly, but it's actually super easy to anticipate. Although, the weird thing is... Also, first try. Feels good. The weird thing about that is, um... I'm pretty sure that... That one and the fire dog both have, uh, the same lunge animation, that bite animation. So I'm not sure... What makes the fire one so hard for me to dodge, if it's just faster or if it's just a mental block. Now we cross the ravine one more time. Just after this is done loading. God, I love Tetsuzanko. I'm realizing now how often I call that Tetsuzanko by mistake. That is... Stiletto. 
I think I already told the story about why uh, it's called Stiletto, because traditionally uh, uh, Devil May Cry games used words with uh, that began with ST, like Stinger, and I can't remember the other one, for their dash attack moves. So Stiletto naturally followed for Bayonetta's. And, oh, right, another notebook. This one, it's been so long since we've had uh, notes on the topic of magic that I almost thought I had skipped in one of them somewhere, because I know there's at least four of them. But anyway, this one is just, uh, this one's just flavor text regarding the Beast Within, which we just got. And it's not, it, yeah, it's not particularly eye-opening. And what do we have up here? Oh, Grace and Glory, you guys don't have shit on me anymore. At least not until they go supersonic later in, uh... No, it's not this chapter. I think it might be the one after this one, though. Me, bro. You even lift, bro? That's got that's quickly becoming one of my new favorite phrases. Ooh, the ass saving properties of Bat Within in full effect there. Come on, step your game up, Grace and Glory. Have I taken damage yet? I know I've taken a hit, but I bat within and out of that, I think. This shouldn't finish him, but he'll be in a heap on the ground for a follow-up attack, and then it's easy pickings. Alright, come on, you're plat. Give a brother playing a sister a break. Eh? Eh? Maybe? Oh right, these guys pop up on the bridge. Before I get my ranking. But we will just blow straight past them. I wonder if bypassing these enemies is gonna kill my ranking lead. Because I think it did in a previous chapter, like three or four. Yep. Didn't get the combo score high enough. Boo-hoo. Oh well. Oh, since we're leading into a cutscene, uh, let's resume with that at the start of the next episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.